start from the neoplasms of the small intestine. Uh, the small intestine represents about 75 parts of the length and uh, greater than 90 percent of the surface area uh, of the GIT tract. Uh, despite its length, and it's very interesting, despite its uh, big length, the large surface area it occupied the uh, primary small intestinal tumors are rare in small bowel as compared to the uh, colonic neoplasms, means 40 to 60 percent per times less than as compared to the colonic neoplasms, and only uh, account for the 3 percent of the GI neoplasms overall. Uh, might be the reason behind is that the uh, rapid transit times of the luminal liquid contents is there in the small bowel and lower bacterial load in the small intestine and the detoxification effects of the mucous enzymes as well contribute to decrease production or uh, the exposure to carcinogens um, and the one thing is uh, uh, I want to say about the, yes uh, immunoglobin A Ig antibodies there and the lymphoid tissue as you know is there in the small bowel which also enhances immunosurveillance for the tumor. In the small intestine, uh, there are lesions which are inflammatory lesions which presents as the polypoid masses and lead to endoscopic biopsies or palypectomies because of their polypoid appearance. Several inflammatory and non-neoplastic uh, entities enter into the differential diagnosis of dysplasia and malignancy in the small bowel. Right now, as, as in this image, as you can see, uh, it's a polypidal lesion and it's uh, present as a polypidal mass in the small bowel mucosa. As you can see, a very bland looking and normal appearance of a small bowel mucosa, but there's an elevation, elevation of the mucosa in the small intestine. Region. It's a Brunner gland nodule, also known as Brunner gland hematoma, adenoma, and the nodular hyperplasia of the Brunner gland or X, XYZ. Uh, characterized, it's characterized by the nodular proliferation of the Brunner glands. We will see in the next image as well. Um, it's, um, if you see under the microscope, it will show you the, you the proliferation of Brunner, Brunner glands uh, with ducts and scattered stromal elements. It's the microscopic uh, appearance of the previous image of the Brunner gland hematoma or the adenoma or the hyperplasia. Uh, many names for it. The if you see in this image, the Brunner glands are arranged lobules. There are various, various multiple lobules in, in, in the microscopic images and they are separated by the Fibrosepta. Uh, it can be associated with the uh, peptide duodenitis and the erosions and may present with the GI bleeding or the duodenal obstruction. Uh, they are most common location in, in the most common location of this uh, type of uh, polypidal mass is in the posterior wall of the duodenum and the junction between the first and the second portions. Again in this image on the one on the left side, it shows a polypidal mass in the duodenum and if you uh, put ancient blue stains or the PS stain in this histopathological slides or, the, or the, in the specific biopsy specimen, it highlights the goblet cells in the blue as the, uh, the, the goblet cells in the epithelium appears like a blue color as you can see in the topmost uh, part in the right side of the image. And the Bure glands in the submucosa and the deep mucosa appears magenta. Again, uh, as, as said earlier, this is the uh, lesions which shows polypidal mass in the small bowel, and the polypectomy has been done for it. And it is like the microscopic appearance, as you can see in this image. It's a case of heterotopic gastric tissue. In the small bubble, it occasionally present as a polypidal masses. And on the right side, uh, if I can show you the higher magnification, there's a parietal chief cells. Uh, and the, uh, you, on the top, you can see the villus like a structure, finger like projection. It's a small bubble mucosa having a goblet cells on the top. 
I have seen this case you know, when I was in uh, R5, residency of R5 in uh, Dhaka National Hospital. The case uh, of, uh, very interesting case of the heterotopic pancreas. As you can see, there's a bulk of pancreatic tissue of the parenchyma found in the submucosa of, of the small bowel or the small intestine. Uh, it's, it's composed of virial mixture of benign pancreatic acini, the rounding structure as you can see in this image, and the ductules there. The arrow pointed out the small uh, eyelids, the normal, normal structure of the cells in the pancreas. On the topmost side of the, uh, on the left image, if you can see on the topmost, a part of the image there is a small bowel mucosa showing the wing villus like projections so one must uh, know these type of things when uh, the uh, endoscopic uh, findings reveals a polypidal mass or the lesion in the small bowel and, and if you are suspecting that like, might be there is a tumor but uh, when you are doing uh, and histopathology of this bi bi case it reveals just a benign lesions and the atotopic pancreas in the submucosa the small test, as in this case. Few words about the uh, hematomatous polyp in the small intestine. As you know, the hematoma is uh, a disorganized tumor like group composed of the mature cell types. And in the category of the hematomatous polyp, you, know, you will see the uh, Perzjager syndrome, the juvenile polyp, and the Cordon syndrome uh, associated with the P10 mutation. What has to be remembered in the first JGA syndrome is that uh, if, if the polyps can occur sporadically or they may be a part of the inherited syndromes known as the first JGA syndrome, uh, characterized by the germline mutation of the tumor suppressor gene, which is STK11 and the LKB1. This has to be remembered the name of the gene involved in this uh, first JGA syndrome. The polyp uh, preferentially affects the small intestine, but the part is the jejunum. Uh, followed by the duodenum. Uh, on clinical side of view, you will see uh, a cutaneous melanocytic pigmentation, uh, pigmentation of the lips, the oral mucosa, the digits, and the palms. The microscopic uh, view will be seen in the next slide. Uh, about the juvenile polyp, uh, the juvenile polyp, which is uh, in the small bowel, are usually the part of the juvenile polyposis syndrome. And uh, again, uh, the, the, again, we're going to revise the uh, Cordon syndrome, which is the P10 uh, mutation base hematoma. Very beautiful image on the left side uh, polypoidal, low, large lobulated polyp. Uh, it's, uh, and it's found to be under the microscope, as you can see on the right side, the microscopic view shows the. Uh, Perth Jagger syndrome. The Perth Jagger syndrome, as you can see in the microscope, there's a diffuse of benign epithelium supported by arborizing bands of smooth muscles over there. I will point it out. And the very right side, you will see the high power view of, of, of this image. It shows the focal dilated glands intermingled with the normal glands, uh, which shows no ATP. And they are separated by the bundles of smooth muscles. The case of the juvenile polyp, uh, as you can see in the gross specimen of this polyp, it's a cut section, uh, appears to be a bisectic view, which shows the polyp uh, dilated cystically spaces, in the, uh, which is clearly grossly apparent. Uh, the, the, the next image is the microscopic view of this, uh, this specimen, this polyp which shows a cystically dilated glands easily appreciated in this view filled with the mucus and the inflammatory debris in, in, the, in the lumen. The support stoma also shows the inflammation. Microscopic slides or the view of the uh, first jagged polyp of the duodenum. Uh, as you can see, there's a low of glandular epithelium separated by the complex arborizing bundles of the smooth muscles. The polyps may contain fossa of dysplasia as the last image. Uh, it appears to be like a blue dysplasia at the surface. Uh, if you see this image, uh, you will see that, that it's abruptly changed into the hyperchromatic 
like areas which are which are the areas of the lobe dysplasia the microscopic image of the uh, first jagger polyp in this image you can see the arboising muscle fibers that surrounds the dysplastic glands the glands uh, easily affected by the hyperchromatic like appearance the hyper hyperchromasia uh, like glands over there these are the focus of the uh, dysplastic glands and uh, you can see that the misplacement of the glands are seen over there uh, appears like the uh, that the glands are misplaced in the bundles of the smooth muscles uh, in the stalk it uh, appears to like to be a invasive cancer uh, however muscle bundles surround both the dysplastic glands and the non dysplastic glands and uh, the point favor to the benign uh, appearance of this uh, polyp is that that there is no dysplasia around the uh, dysplastic glands and the microscopic view of the juvenile polyp process syndrome shows cystically dilated glands embedded in a loose edematous and the inflamed stroma the case of the uh, juvenile polyp uh, mostly the dysplasia in this type of polyp associated with the syndromic like the juvenile syndromic juvenile polyps and as you can see in the same some glands are filled with mucin and the inflammatory debris uh, dysplasia uh, as you can see the uh, hyperchromatic like areas in the low power view you can easily appreciate that the on the right areas it appears to be the hyperchromatic and is the area of the dysplastic focus on the left side of the uh, of, of, of this image shows the normal benign appearance uh, glands though they appears dilated and mucin filled uh, so there is uh, there so, so these are the features of the juvenile polyp so it's a case of the juvenile juvenile polyp associated with the dysplastic focus and is uh, seen in the syndromic juvenile polyps adenomas similar to those of the large ball can develop in the small ball as well but their frequency is uh, very less as compared to the large ball the duodenum and the jejunum are involved more often than the rest of the part of the ball adenomas can be single or multiple they may be pedunculated or sessile and they can have the microscopic appearance of a tubular tubular villus or the villus adenoma tubular means the glands formation is there a glands like appearance and the villus is like the finger like projections on the surface the tubular villus I means the combined feature of both uh, like this if if it shows 75% of the uh, of the of the lesion shows the villus like appearance then it's the villus adenoma if it's between the 25 to 75 percent it uh, shows it is tubular villus adenoma as with their colorectal co colorectal counterparts the incidence of malignancy is greater if the lesions are villus this has to be remembered the villus adenomas are more prone to develop malignancy and they are large and multiple the villus lesions are often large and sessile with a tendency to recur and a high incidence of malignancy pyloric gland adenomas as the name said they are composed of the cystically dilated tubular like areas of the pyloric type glands of the stomach and they are found in in increased frequency in the patient having the fap means familial adenomatous polyposis and so therefore they have a apc mutation as as you can see in the image the adenoma pyloric adenoma uh, composed of tightly packed tubules resembling pyloric glands of the stomach there is minimal inflammation in this slide uh, sitting right at the top of this image uh, the nuclei basally located having a small nuclei uh, red appearing appearing cells in there adenocarcinoma of the small uh, ball is 40 to 60 times less common than its counterpart in the large ball uh, they mainly occurred in the duodenum uh, duodenal area and uh, associated with the uh, small bowel adenomas and the familial adenomatous polyposis syndrome 
hereditary non polyposis colorectal carcinoma, which is also known as Lynch syndrome, and the poor uh, and the Persjager syndrome as well. There are many uh, prognostic factors for this adenocarcinoma and the uh, large bowel, like the, like as you know, the lymph node involvement appears to be a uh, bad prognostic factors, usually for all the malignant tumors and the retroperitoneal seedings, metastasis, lymphovascular invasion, uh, and the extent of a tumor invasion. They all lead to uh, the adverse prognostic factors involved. The base type of uh, histological tumor types. Are seen in the adenocarcinomas uh, of the small ball, though you can also see in the large ball as well. This type, like the mucinous and the secondary cell adenocarcinoma. You are familiar with this term and the gastric tumors as well. When we, when we talked about the gastric adenocarcinoma, uh, you will see a notice there by signal and cell adenocarcinoma. It's also there. And the adenosquamous carcinoma, as, as the name said. The tumor composed of the malignant tumor composed of the both glandular or the squamous component, component. And the other type is the anaplastic carcinoma. As the name said, they are bizarre tumor cells having some sort of a multinucleate type cells with abundant cytoplasms showing no sign of glandular differentiation. So, therefore, they, their behavior is extremely aggressive. These are the gross view of the small bowel adenocarcinoma, like the infiltrative growth pattern producing a napping like lesion in the first image. And the, and the other image shows the polypidal areas or the exophytic growth of the malignant tumor. The case of the small bowel adenocarcinoma of the intestinal type, as you can see. The top uh, side of this, which shows the villus like areas, so it's basically a large villus adenoma. And underline of it, you can see the glandular like areas have forcibly arranged, infiltrating into the, uh, uh, the wall of that uh, ball. And uh, as in this image, it's, it's about causing the half of the part of the muscles propria in this image associated with the inflammatory infiltrate around it. And the desperate is also there. So, this is the case of a small ball adenocarcinoma, intestinal type, and up here underlying a large villus adenoma is also appreciated in this image. Small ball adenomas are in some cases similar to their colony counterparts, as you can see in the left image. Uh, uh, you can, and the arrow pointed to the uh, gastric surface cell metaplasia. Uh, in the case of the duodenal adenoma. On the right side, uh, as you can see, the, uh, there's a more prominent less skull like areas. Uh, again, this is the case of the adenoma uh, and the side of the jejunal area, which shows a focus of invasive adenocarcinoma in the stock. Uh, the higher power view on the right side shows the infiltrated glands showing the hyperchromasia uh, NC ratio is disturbed in this pleomorphism uh, is there uh, irregular infiltrating grains with associated dysplasia. Beautiful learning slides for you guys just recall it oh, what are they and what they appears look like like in the right side of the magnifying view of this uh, histological slides show, showing a tumor cells having a, some sort of a specific like appearance, you call it, uh, the nucleus are eccentrically placed and the eosinophilic cytoplasm which is basically a human uh, with the mucin pushing the nucleus to the periphery. So what is this? This is the uh, significant cell adenocarcinoma. If you focus this, uh, these slides, you will see some sort of different types of cells in it. Like the one shows the malignant glandular like appearance and the, on the other side it shows a scoured like cells and at places you can you can easily appreciate the keratin like formation is also there, means the scoured cells is there. So when you will see the both type of cells like the neoplastic glandular cells and the malignant squamous cells, 
and then they are known as to be adenos commissal carcinoma though they are very rare in the small bowel and you will see that in the large bowel as well in the anal carcinoma but they are very rare in the small bowel um, they are the aggressive uh, type of tumors and uh, they are uh, according to who criteria 10% of the both the, of the both, both of the components required to make this diagnosis the adenomas as you know classified as tubular tubulus or the villus on the basis of their architecture like uh, if you are talking about the tubular adenomas they are small pedunculated polyps and composed of small rounded or tubular glands in contrast to the uh, villus adenomas shows are of large incisive and they are uh, covered by the slender villi like the villus like projection finger finger like projection over there and the tubular villus as the name said they are the adenomas with a mixture of the tubular and the villus elements as you can see in this image this is the image of the tubular villus adenoma you will see some areas showing the villus like a finger like projection like areas Uh, at the top of of the image, uh, showing the adenomatous epithelium, and below it you will see that there is a infiltrating glands, uh, which are invasive adenocarcinoma, arise from the base of this uh, adenoma, which shows the high gate dysplasia as well. In continuation to the previous slides, this is the more deeper uh, part view of this tumor. which shows the invasive glands demonstrate more severe atypia easily appreciated the cells cells are the nuclei are very uh, pleomorph shows the pleomorphic like appearance uh, hypochromasia is there the vesicular nuclei is there the open chromatin is there and the common nuclei is also there and the mitosis fecal mitosis also appreciated in this image uh, there is also a common dysplasia around this invasive component Interesting case shows ectopic pancreas uh, and it shows only ducts without uh, sinai and the eyelids. Uh, it's mimicking a, like invasive adenocarcinoma in the duodenal submucosa. Uh, but if you if you uh, more focus about the architecture, you will easily appreciate it that there is retained tubular architecture uh, surrounding a smooth muscle. And uh, and also no ATP in this case, so appears blank like appearance. Though this is the case of hydrotopic, but no dysplasia, uh, no feature suggestion for the invasive adenocarcinoma. Recalling the previous sessions of the gastric tumors, this is the case of the. Uh, typical nested organoid growth pattern of the well differentiated neuroendocrine tumors uh, recording the morphology of or the histopathology of this type of tumors is that that they appears a uh, uniform round nuclei having a stippled chromatin like the salt and pepper like appearance and having inconspicuous nuclei uh, if you do Or go for the ISC immunostick stains. They are positive for the cytopheisen stain, which are the neuroendocrine marker. In the large bowel, the colorectal polyps. Um, Uh, like uh, divided into the several broad categories like the adenomatous and the serrated polyps the later uh, category includes the uh, exceedingly common hyperplastic polyp uh, showing the serrated like appearance and the traditional serrated adenoma which is known as the TSA and the SSA or SSP which is sessile serrated polyp or sessile serrated adenoma you will see this under the heading of the hyperplastic polyps which are exceedingly common in the large bowel as said before the the adenomas classified as the tubular one the villus one the tubular villus and the sessile serrated adenoma traditional 
pseudo adenoma yeah. one thing you should know that uh, adenoma by default shows uh, dysplasia uh, whether it uh, it may be a low grade or high grade beautiful images showing the gross appearances of the colon colonic adenomatous polyps as you can easily appreciate it, the one with SSI growth and the two with the pedunculated polyps. Uh, the adenomatous polyps, uh, uh, the tuber adenomas are distributed regularly throughout the large ball with 40% on the right side of the colon, the 40% on the left side of the colon and 20% in the rectum. Uh, they feel their frequency rising with the age and the black uh, people have a low prevalence than the white ones and the most polyps are asymptomatic but they may result in bleeding from the twisting or the vascular obstruction uh, if large enough they may cause uh, changes of ball habits or really uh, intersusception microscopically as you can see there is an increased number of glands and cells per unit area compared to the normal mucosa. Uh, the cells are coded having hyperchromatic nuclei, uh, have an increased number of mitosis. Uh, mucin production is highly variable, but in this image, uh, you will see that the areas shows the uh, decrease in mucin productions. Focal areas of villous configuration is also noted, and, and uh, recalling again the those with a villus component comprising 25% or more of the polyp are considered to be as the tubular villus adenomas and those with a villus component comprising 75% or more of the polyp are villus adenomas. The villus adenomas are larger ones and more prone to develop a malignancy. And, uh, all adenomas have at least low gate dysplasia by definition uh, but they may show severe cytological alterations and label themselves as a high gate dysplasia. The image shows the gross appearance of the polyp with tubular villus features and the microscopic appearance of a tubular villus adenoma. You will see uh, on when you will going to be posted into the pathological laboratory and, uh, uh, and having a chance to see the uh, colonic biopsy of the polyps you will see um, uh, serrated like appearance the sawtooth architecture uh, in, in the microscopic image of the polyp which is usually seen in the hyperplastic polyp uh, in the hyperplastic polyps these are the sessile and small they are rarely exceeding 0.5 centimeter of the size in the diameter if they are pedunculated and having a large appearance and located specifically in the right colon then one was suspicious for the uh, so some other group like the cell polyps uh, microscopically the glands are elongated and showing the intraluminal enfoldings these are the enfoldings which give rise to a sawtooth configurations or the serrated one that's what is named determined and and again uh, you will see uh, in the recent years it has become obvious that many lesions diagnosed in the past as the uh, hyperplastic polyp, the benign ones are usually or actually a sessile, sessile polyps or SSPs uh, or SSA, sessile adenomas. Uh, they are, uh, the studies show clearly that these lesions are perineoplastic one and linked to the serrated pathways of the colorectal carcinomas which comprise about 15% of the colorectal carcinomas and particularly they occurs in the elderly females and in the right colon. The histological view shows clear serrations, the enfoldings in the luminal side of the glands of the caps uh, and specifically, uh, characteristically you will see the anchor shaped caps at the base of the mucosa uh, in a sessile set polyp. Uh, on the right of the image, you will see uh, there is a dilatation of the caps at the mucosal base, which is also characteristic for the sessile serrated polyps. TSA, uh, traditional serrated adenoma, uh, despite similarities to the SSP, uh, sessile serrated polyps, these are the distinct endoscopically as well as pathologically. 
and uh, even at the molecular genetic level they are differ. Uh, the exact relationship between the TSA and the serrated colorectal neoplasia is uncertain and but uh, but as of now it appears to not to be a part uh, of the lesion that is central to the pathogenesis of serrated colorectal neoplasia as in the case with the SSP or the SSA. Uh, the TSAs are relatively uncommon comprising less than 1% of the colorectal polyps. They are small and the left-sided one uh, as compared to the in contradiction to the uh, SSA or SSP which are more towards the uh, right side and the large appear, appearance. Uh, patients with TSA seems to be uh, histolog histologically if you see this type of polyps and uh, they are uniform throughout often having a viliform like appearance, the viliform appearance, the cytoplasm is often distinctly isnoclic as you can see in this image as well, with centrally or basally located uniform, slightly hyperchromic, penicillate nuclei, elongated uh, nuclei with infrequent mitosis. Uh, a characteristic feature of this uh, polyp is that, that there is a, a topic kept fossa is seen as in this image as well, which are abortive attempts at for forming a new cubes based formation uh, high in the polyps. I have seen many cases of the juvenile vector polyp in my, res in the, in my residency period. Uh, many of the cases are the children having uh, under the age of the five years. As you can see in this image, this is the outer or uh, one of the gross image of the polyp, uh, the outer aspect of the general polyp, uh, circumscribed one, and the cut surface shows cystically dilated glands in edematous stroma. Juvenile retention polyp is the most frequent colonic polyp seen in the children. Um, uh, traditionally, it has been described as a single and located in the rectosigmoid area. Uh, however, in case use of the endoscopic uh, procedure, uh, it has shown that many cases more than one polyp is present and that a high proportion of them occurs proximal to the sigmoid colon. And these patients usually present with the rectal bleeding and auto amputation is common and the polyp is uh, being slept off and pass per rectum and disappear. Uh, grossly, juvenile polyps are the granular red surface, as you can see in the previous image, and the cystic like appearance on the cross sections. Uh, microscopically, um, ulceration is there on the surface, gastric tissue is there, and the glands are dilated, filled with the mucus, devoid of atypical features uh, surrounding inflamed edematous stroma. Uh, you can see the occasional foci of the lower highgate dysplasia. Uh, though they are more commonly seen or rise in the setting of the uh, juvenile polyposis syndrome. The first Jagas polyp are practically always seen as part of the syndrome and have microscopically features similar to their more common counterparts as we see as we can as we already seen in the small ball. Uh, lack of cellular ATP is there, disorganization of glands is there the occurrence of uh, several cell types including the penis cells, the one with the isnophilic cytoplasm uh, and the presence of the smooth muscle fibers uh, from the musculus mucosae which give lesions a hematomatous appearance uh, is the most, uh, are the most important features of this polyp. Uh, this pattern of, as you can see that may show the glandular disorganizations and the epithelium mis misplacement as well which on many occasions uh, simulating invasions it should not be confused with the malignancies. Polyposis syndromes, uh, several syndromes associated with the colonic polyps and they are having increased rates of colonic cancers and, uh, have been described in this type of polyposis syndromes like uh, familial adenomatous polyposis also known as polyposis coli uh, comprised by the presence of hundreds of thousands of the polyps throughout the world. The microscopic appearance of most of the individual lesions uh, are, the, are the same uh, as the sporadic single adenomatous polyp. These, these are inherited conditions uh, shows autosomal dominant. Uh, you should remember this that uh, familial adenomatous polyposis are 
inherited conditions and shows AD autosomal dominant inheritance and having the, the responsible gene is APC which is located on the 5q21 uh, on the, uh, at the chromosome Radiographically and grossly, the ball is studded with polyps ranging from very slight elevation of the mucosa to relatively large masses. Uh, the presence of several adenomatous polyps in a patient does not necessarily indicate the presence of FAP. For diagnosis of FAP, uh, what to remember is that a minimum of 100 polyps need, needs to be present before to making such a diagnosis. On, on, uh, and can be assumed on morphogenic grounds. As you can see in the image, the radiography of the family adenomatous polyposis involving the entire ball. And on the right side, the gross appearance of family adenomatous polyposis, the entire large ball is involved by the innumerable small polyps. The FAP can involve other portion of the GIT tract as well, like the stomach and the small ball. Uh, if they are left untreated, uh, one or more carcinoma will develop in the large bowel in nearly all of the patients. Uh, so, carcinomas arising in a background of FAP occurs usually on average about 20 years earlier than the ordinary colorectal carcinoma. And most of them of the patient become manifest in the early 30s. Therefore, prophylactic colectomies at the age of the 20 to 25 years of age is recommended of this type of patients. If the surgery is performed, it is total colectomy and followed by the ileal podge and the anastomosis with close monitoring of the colectal cuff uh, and the ileal podge because there is a chance of possibility of development of the polyps and the carcinoma at these sites. Gardner syndrome is a variant of FAP characterized by the presence of numerous large ball adenomas with multiple astromas of the skull and the mandibles associated with the multiple cutaneous cysts of the skin. The mutation is the same APC gene and uh, the potential for development of large bowel carcinoma is no different from the typical FAP. About the Turcot syndrome, it's a variant of the hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer. This has to be remembered that Gardner syndrome is a variant of FAP and the Turcot syndrome is a variant of HMPCC, which is now known as Lynch syndrome. The name given to the odd combination of the colorectal adenomatous polyps and the brain tumors, usually glioblastomas. And in, in these cases, the, uh, the mutation is germline mutation in, at the level of the mismatch repair genes. SPS, uh, the name said, is a societal polyposis syndrome characterized by the presence of the multiple serrated polyps, especially SSPs, societal serrated polyps. Some of them of large size and some kind, sometimes accompanied by the uh, adenocarcinoma. Juvenile polyposis, the name said, is, is defined by the presence of multiple juvenile polyps throughout the bowel. This condition, which can be life threatening, they are associated with the development of the adenomatous polyps and the adenocarcinoma of the large bowel and the duodenum, etc. Some of the polyps in this disorder have combined juvenile and adenomatous features. Uh, the important point to remember in this is that, that the mutation, the mutation involved in the general polyposis is MAT4 or BNPR1A gene. Uh, if you remember only is MAT4, it's enough for you guys. About the Conchite Canada syndrome, these, these are the non heritage disorder in which multiple colorectal polyps of the juvenile types are associated. And they are associated with the ectodermal changes like the alopecia, the nail atrophy, and the hyperpigmentation. About the cordon syndrome, the, the thing you have to remember is that they, are, they have a colorectal polyps. There is an increased incidence of the malignancy uh, in various sites like the breast and the thyroid, and they are associated with the mutation at the level of the P10 gene, meaning the P10 gene is involved in the Cordon syndrome. It's a colonic polyp uh, in, a, in a patient with a Cronkite Canada syndrome. 
Uh, as you can see, the appearance is similar to the juvenile polyp, showing the dilated glands uh, in this. A few words about the sea of the large ball. They are common in the uh, Europe areas, the North America, and uh, but low in the Africa, Asia. Uh, they are the third most common cancer among men and women, and the second leading cause of death from cancers. Uh, and at the same time, they are the most curable form of carcinoma of the GIT tract. Males and females are affected equally, and the mean age at the diagnosis is in the six to seven decades of life. Uh, cases occurring in the young age, for less than 40 years of age, uh, and they are usually located in the distal colon and the rectum, and tend to show features associated with the aggressive behavior or are associated with one of the hereditary colorectal cancer syndromes. The causes and the pathogenesis of the colorectal carcinoma are related to both environmental and the genetic factors are there. Like specifically if we are talking about the consumption of the beef and the injection of the large amounts of animal fats and there is an incidence of colorectal carcinomas are uh, increased in, in these type of individuals. Uh, the genetic factors manifest itself in a variety of ways like uh, uh, high predisposition, predisposition for colorectal carcinomas are seen in the cases of the FAP. Nearly 100% by the age of 50 years, uh, the FAP patients develop colorectal carcinomas. Various gross appearances of the colonic adenocarcinomas, the one with the polypoid pattern of growth in uh, rectal lesion, um, the cake-like configuration with central laceration, and the one on the right, uh, the deep penetrating uh, ulcerating tumor is seen. Quickly visualize and understand the way the irregularly arranged uh, neoplastic glands with associated desmoplastic response in this tumor. This is the case of the invasive adenocarcinoma. Uh, Carpized by the stomach desmoplasia easily appreciated in this image. Again, quickly visualize this microscopic slide. The one with on, on the left shows the abundant mucinous areas and the atypical glandular-like cells in it. This is the case of the mucinous adenocarcinoma. Uh, and on the right, you will easily appreciate what is this. HNPCC, hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancers, also known as the Lynch syndromes. They are originally described as the family clustering of the cancers at several sites like the colorectum, endometrium, stomach, ovary, uterus, X, Y, Z. The colon cancers in patients with HNPCC, it tends to occur at the younger age. This is the discriminant point, point and then do sporadic colon cancer, which are usually at the elderly age. In the cases of the HNPCC, cancers are usually occurs in the younger age and they are often located on the right colon. The adenomas in the HNPCC, they are present over there, but the numbers are not as excessive as, in, as are seen in the polyposis cases. In many cases, the sessile cell adenomas are associated with the HNPCC, and the motion, motion production may be prominent in, in the adenocarcinoma. Just as identification of the APC mutation, the FAP, uh, the HNPCC is caused by the jump line mutation in genes that encodes responsible for the detection, excision, and the repair of the error that occurred during DNA replications. Mismatch repair genes. Uh, at least five mismatch repair genes have been recognized, but the majority ones are the MSH2 and the MNH1. TNM is staging for the uh, colonic carcinomas. Like as you can see, the TIS denotes carcinoma in situ. IS means for the in situ. If the tumor is, is in situ, mean, not, it's located in the mucosal areas, no involvement of the laminar pop is there, but no extension through the muscular mucosa, then this is TIS. T1, the tumor invades the submucosa. T2, the tumor invades the muscular propria. T3, when the tumor invades through the muscular propria, pass all over the Propria and found in the peri, uh, pericolorectal tissue, the fat areas. Uh, T4, the tumor in, involves the visceral peritoneum or invades or adheres the adjacent organs or structures. 
Likewise, the N denotes for the regional imports metal stresses, and the M is for the metal stresses to the other organs, like uh, going towards the uh, peritoneal metal stresses or some sort of uh, other organ metal stresses. The important image is from the basis. Uh, it shows the morphological and the molecular changes in the adenoma carcinoma sequence. Means how adenoma leads toward the carcinoma, uh, and what are the factors involved in this uh, uh, in the scenario of the morphological changes and the molecular changes. It has been postulated that the loss of one normal copy of the tumor surface or genes, which is APC, occurs early. Uh, so APC gene mutation occurs early in this type of case and this is the first stage H uh, and, and so on involving the KRAS, SMAT2, SMAT4 and the tumor suppression in T53 which found to be a the late event. Overall the aggregation of effects of these mutations uh, leads towards uh, formation of the uh, colonic carcinoma. The microsatellite instability pathway in patients with DNA mismatch repair gene deficiency due to the loss of mismatch repair genes, uh, the, the mutation accumulate in microsatellite repeats. Uh, the condition referred to as the microsatellite instability. And these mutations generally are silent because the microsatellites typically are located on the non coding ends, and, and, but others microsatellite sequences are located in the coding of promoter genes like involved in the regulation of cell growth uh, like encoding of the transforming growth factor receptor and the uh, apoptotic factors proteins like BEX, BX. if uh, there's a mutation so uh, you don't have a transforming growth factor uh, which usually inhibit uh, colonic epithelial cell proliferation so uh, and likewise if type 2 d uh, type 2 transforming care factor b septum mutation occur then uh, it's clear that it's contribute to the uncontrolled growth of the cells the same is the case with the bex which is uh, apoptotic protein um, if it's lost during the mutation so in it's, it may enhance the survival of the uh, genetically abnormal clones or the cells and, and leading towards the carcinoma. The prognostic factors depend uh, on the depth of the invasion of the tumor cells as we see in the TNM staging and the presence of lymph node metastasis uh, and the histological types, few of the types shows a uh, good prognosis and and some of the of them show the worst prognosis or the agonic progressive and the distant metastasis is also one of the most important prognostic factors. Before ending this session, let me uh, update you about the uh, new you know, classification of the WHO GIT PEC, uh, the fifth edition. Uh, in this edition, uh, for instance, cell seated polyp or the adenoma is replaced into the cell seated lesion SSL uh, for a variety of reasons behind it. And the most common, most uh, important reason is that that uh, the, 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 the lesions that fall into this category are not necessary for reproductive in appearance. In addition, uh, some of the fact that some stated lesions cannot always be classified reliably into the uh, three general categories like the hyperplastic polyp, the sessile uh, stated polyps, or the TSA. Uh, after the, uh, the clinical, histopathological, and the endoscopically uh, consultation. Um, if you can't rule out this lesion as a sessile sated polyp or the hyperplastic polyp or the TSA, then the new fourth category has been added, which is unclassified sated adenoma. Uh, for you guys, uh, you have to study uh, all around of your basic 10th edition. Uh, so, so, I think it's all enough for you guys. Uh, stay blessed. Take care. Allah Hafiz.